Welcome back to the Gem Cutters Craft. Today I wanted to talk about the handpiece machine and how we can acclimate ourselves to the machine whether we are a first time cutter or transitioning over from a mass style machine to a handpiece machine. So whether you're a seasoned vet or a brand new cutter, this might be the first time that you are using the handpiece style machine. And so I wanted to go through and just talk about a little bit of tips and tricks and things that we need to know in order to get started with this machine. So I would say the first thing that we need to know in order to prepare ourselves as cutters for the handpiece machine is our mind. If you've been using an American made mass style machine, there's going to be some things about this machine that are completely different and most things are the same. Of course we have angles, we have index, we have depth control. Those are the three things that we need in order to properly facet a stone, but other things are going to be a little bit different. Now setting our expectations properly is important. This particular machine comes from Sri Lanka. It is you know what we would call a budget machine as far as as far as price goes um, the build quality is good but we can't really expect it to be on the same standards as American or Swiss made or German made I mean it's just it's a different thing um, so knowing that when you buy the machine is important and and, and setting your expectations correctly um, but more importantly than that is setting your understanding correctly about how you're going to approach your cutting. If you've been using a mass style machine, then probably you're used to um, having the machine do a fair bit of the work for you. You know, you have your, your depth gauge, maybe you have your angle gauge, you can put your stone down, pick it up, you're watching the gauges, watching the depth, watching the BW meter, all these things that we've developed over the years in order to help us facet easier this machine's more simple it doesn't have all the bells and whistles what it does have is the stone so every time that you come down and start to do a cut what do you look at obviously there isn't much to look at we've got the speed uh, here that's not helping us very much all we have to look at is the stone itself if we want to know if we need to cut further we look at the stone. If we want to know if our index is off, we look at the stone. If we want to know if we need more polishing, we look at the stone. If we want to see if our mains are balanced, we look at the stone. There's nothing else to look at but the stone. There's no meters, there's no gauges, there's no dials. There is only the stone. Aside from looking at the stone, of course, we have our ears, we have our hands, we have the feeling, we have the sense of time but we don't have any other special meter. So that's one thing. You're going to be doing the majority of the work and the machine is only that tool to help you do the work. It's not assisting you any more than just holding the stone for you. And I think that is one major difference. Second thing that we need to understand, um, balancing the handpiece. Now I have a video about this. Um, any videos that I refer to in this video, I'm going to put down into the description here. I've got a video about balancing the handpiece, but this is really important. When you first buy this machine, you unbox it, you set it up, you have to balance the handpiece before you can start cutting the stone because maybe it's been balanced in the factory, maybe not. Maybe it's, it's become adjusted. Um, in shipping, maybe when you put your machine together, it's slightly different than the, the factory did. So you need to confirm that your handpiece is balanced before you start doing any stones. Because otherwise, if it's not, you won't be able to make a proper girdle line. And then if you can't make a proper girdle line, the rest of your stone is going to be flawed. So balance the handpiece. That must be step one as far as the practical needs of this machine. Okay, next thing, cutting sequences. Again, I've done a video about this as well, just to reiterate that. If you're coming from the world of competition cutting or just regular production cutting on a mass machine, you might already have the habit of using multiple laps in your polishing sequence. You know, if you're jumping from, let's say, a 1200 grit cutting lap into maybe an 8000 grit, then a 60,000 grit, then a 200,000 grit, those are your polishing sequences. This machine's going to have trouble replicating that same experience because of the fact that the handpiece is a little bit less repeatable than the mast and we're constantly adjusting whether it be the feet or the cheater depending on which model of handpiece we're using 
I found in my practice that trying to go through multiple levels of polish in different laps doesn't really work very well. It's very, you know, if, if you've been adjusting the cheater or adjusting the feet as you go to make sure that all your meat points are correct, it's very, very hard to find those specific adjustments. Again, I would say nearly impossible. The workaround for this is no problem, and actually it's a time saver, which is using the dual band lap. So again, I'm gonna put a link into the description I already have talking about my personal method of, of using dual band laps like the Diamatrix in order to be able to do, let's say you're pre-polishing and your final polishing on the same lap. So when you do those cheater changes or those feet adjustments, you just touch here, touch here. You have gone through pre-polish and polish in the same step and been able to make your fine adjustments of angle, index, cheater, feet, whatever you need to do to get the stone done. And you don't ever have to worry about finding it again because once you've polished it with your inner ring, it's finished. So one thing that you might consider doing if you're using the handpiece machine could be crown first. So as you can see here in this brilliant pair, we've started this one crown first. It doesn't have the pavilion cut in yet. It's just preformed down there. And the majority of people in the world that are using these type of handpiece machines are starting with crown first. Now, it's not mandatory. You can of course do whatever you want. I know there's a lot of handpiece cutters who also start with pavilion first, do your culet point, do your girdle, etc. But the traditional way of using these machines is crown first. Crown first also gives us a couple other benefits which is um, you might then change your uh, dopping and transferring technique. Because if you're going to do crown first, uh, most likely you're going to have to do hand preforming. Hand preforming also might be a little bit differently than if you are using a mask machine. A lot of mask cutters just dop the rough, do your girdle on the index gear, and, and then go from there. Whereas traditionally, we will hand shape these stones by hand down here, then dop them uh, in wax. So then if you're dopping with wax, you don't need necessarily any special dop. A flat dop with wax will, will do the same job as a cone or anything else. Once you've finished your crown and you go to flip it over with glue, you don't need any other special dops because the table can glue directly onto a flat dop. So theoretically, you don't need any dops other than a couple of flat dops. That being said, if you're only going to be using that method of dopping, you also don't need a transfer block. Now these machines typically don't come with transfer blocks and I think historically they didn't have them. I think the fact that we can get a transfer block from the manufacturers in Sri Lanka now is a new thing and sort of an optional thing because no one in Sri Lanka is really using them because like I said they're they're hand transferring a table to a flat dop. You don't really need a transfer block to do that. It might not be one thing that you need to do or that you need to change, but maybe one thing to think about, especially if, if this is your first time cutting, you know, you, you have to kind of build your own process, right? You're going to figure out which laps you're going to use. You're going to figure out if you're going to do crown or, or pavilion first. You're going to figure out what kind of a glue you use and all these little choices that you need to make. And this might just be one of those first decisions that you have to do in order to prepare yourself for this type of fastening experience. Another thing that's very special about this machine that I think a lot of people might not understand when they first get the machine is the fine adjustment technique. So if you've been cutting on a mass machine, then likely what you're used to is setting your angle somewhere on your mast and then somewhere underneath there's this fine adjustment knob. So if you need to tilt forward a little bit or back a little bit, you just adjust that little knob and it tilts your angle forward. Now on this handpiece, we don't have that. We just loosen this and we change our angle. And on some models, we might even have this sort of fine adjustment decimal vernier. But one way or the other, we're just setting it and that's the, that's the end of our experience of setting the angles. So one trick that is very helpful in the polishing step. So if you are pre-polishing or polishing and you need to start adjusting and tweaking your meat points a little bit. You don't want to be undoing this angle and moving it up a little bit, moving it down a little bit. It's very coarse and it's hard to make fine adjustments by loosening, the, loosening this thing. So what we can do is actually use the plate as a fine adjustment. 
And the good thing about this is it actually is a time saver. Now the way this works, let's say if I was polishing this stone and let's just say for example it's a round brilliant because that's a really easy stone to demonstrate on. When you're cutting your round brilliant, you know, you've got main facets, you've got little star facets at the top, and then you've got these two break facets at the bottom that make the V shape of the main facet, right? It's two triangular facets that come together to make a V. Now let's say that your V shape is, is, is overlapping. You've overcut them, they're too big, and it's sort of making actually now a Y shape. There's a little line or a tail at the bottom of your main facet that you want to even out. So you go back to your main facet and you need to angle down a little bit, right, to open those V shaped up so that they're pointy and not overlapped. So what we can do, instead of adjusting our angle and then adjusting our height and all this kind of stuff, we can do it all at once. So notice this, um, the stone's not touching the lap. I come down and currently, let's just say for example, I'm on 35 degrees because that's a normal angle that I cut my crown mains on. So I'm not touching the lap. I come down, as soon as I touch it right there, I'm polishing at 35 degrees, right? It says 35 degrees and I'm just barely touching the lap. That means I'm at 35 degrees. All three feet over here are touching the plate. So you know it's flat. But again, we want to angle down a little bit so that we can open up that V shape in the round brilliant that we've overcut. Now, instead of changing our angle and then figuring out where our depth needs to go, all we need to do is this, one turn. We've now lowered our angle down and if you let me do that again just so you can watch here watch the angle of the handpiece I'm just gonna hold it from the back notice that the back is gonna go down because the lap is pushing the stone up and if I keep doing that it's just gonna go down 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 notice that the foot's no longer on the plate we are now let's say at 40 degrees instead of 35 degrees so that's too much usually I move these in quarter turns. So if I need to if I need to go down a little lower, I go to where the lap touches the stone right there and then quarter turn. Polish it a little bit, check it out. If it looks like it needs to go down more, another quarter turn, polish it a little bit more and that's a very fast way to be able to adjust your angles. But now what happens if you need to adjust them up? Because of course it doesn't work the other way, right? If we come down and just touch the lap and now we're again at 35 degrees uh, right there and I want to go to 34 degrees, you might think, okay, just go the other way, go up. But that doesn't work because that just lifts up the handpiece plate off of the lap so it doesn't change the angle anymore you're just sitting on the feet and there's a couple ways we can do this there's sort of the novice way and there's the more advanced way the way that we usually teach this is we actually polish a half degree up so if you cut at 35 you polish at 34.5 so then when you come down and touch you're at the top of the facet and then you always have to go down a little bit to find your angle but to me I've stopped doing this because it just takes a little bit too long and you're always finding your angle. It's a little, it's a little bit too much work. So what I do, I polish at the same angle I cut and if I find that for whatever reason I need to go up a little bit, like for instance maybe I've overcut my stars and I need to open them up a little bit. So I go to the main facet and I want to tilt the handpiece forward, right, towards the stars. So what you can do, pull the handpiece plate back. So now the third foot's hanging in the air. So now if you go up, the handpiece tilts forward. And if you go down, the handpiece tilts back. The only thing you have to be careful about is sometimes when we pull this handpiece plate so far back, because of the way that the machine is built, it might actually not stay true left and right. Like the flatness here maybe is perfectly balanced for your handpiece, but when you pull it back this far, it might be tilted to the side and that's really going to be depending on your machine and depending on your handpiece balance, but try it. If you can get away with it, sometimes you only need to pull it back just that much to get the foot hanging. That's all you need. You probably don't want to pull it all the way back here because most likely this is going to cause you some cheater alignment issues that you'd rather not have. So just pull it back just the bare minimum like that much so that you can float the foot in the air. Then you can go up or you can go down. But you should probably only do that when you need it. And also you have to be very careful because whenever you do this, you need to let the handpiece come down very lightly. You don't want to 
smack that against your polishing lap because you can pop it right off. So the final tip for transitioning into a handpiece machine is to give yourself some time to get used to the machine. I know many people that have jumped into this machine uh, because I've recommended it or because it was affordable or because they wanted to try it. You know, coming from the mass machine, it's a little bit shocking. You know, the first, the first shock is realizing that there's nothing to look at but the stone. The second shock is just the the whole experience of cutting you're you're holding it you can move it you have to play with this plate going up and down all the time you know it, it, it's a lot lower than your than your mass style machine so there's a little bit of adjustment time that you need to give yourself you know a few months maybe even a year if you're not cutting that much and just see how you like it cut a few stones see what the quirks of your machine are see see what's different than than you know what your previous experience is i know for me i've got my main machine is you know this this handpiece machine but i also have a mass machine that i occasionally use and i know for me my technique for cutting is not the same i don't i don't cut the same way on this machine as i do on that machine i don't sit the same way i don't have my lights set up the same way i don't have my chair set up the same way and i don't have the same height of a table so everything is different for me um, also usually when i'm cutting with a mast i'm using a visor Whereas if I'm cutting with a handpiece, I'm almost never using a visor and really everything is just with the loop and I'm just bringing this up here and looking at it that way and it's different. So if you're transitioning onto the handpiece, don't expect it to work like a mast. Don't expect every single little trick and technique that you've learned over the years on a mast machine to work on this machine because it's different. It has different tips and tricks and techniques that you have to figure out. Um, as you go, like adjusting using the plate or, you know, using a, multi, a dual band lap um, or, or, or I'm sure there's millions of other things. Um, so final thing I want to talk about is, you know, if, if this is your first machine, you're just buying a machine and kind of knowing what do you need besides just the machine? Because many people are emailing me and asking me, what do I need to get? You know, is, is, the, is the machine that I buy from Sri Lanka, does it come with everything you need? And, and the answer is no. There's a lot of other stuff that you need and there's a lot of other stuff that you need to budget for before you you know, just go ahead and, and order this because if your budget's only this high and actually you need to go a little bit higher, you might be in trouble. So um, I'm gonna link a PDF down in the comments that has basically my whole shopping list recommendations for everything that I use. But basically what you're going to need, besides the machine itself, you know, the machine's going to come with just the machine base, this master lap, the hand piece, and some dops. That, that's pretty much it. There's no transfer block. There's only one index gear, no laps, no extra tools. So when you order this, you have to decide, are you going to get the speed controller machine like this one is, or are you going to get the fixed speed machine, which is a bit cheaper? The other thing you need to figure out is, are you going to get the cheater handpiece like this one? So you've got the ability to cheat your indexes so you can slightly go left and right like this one has, or you're going to go with the original model, which looks like this and it doesn't have a cheater. Again, I've got a whole video talking about the difference between the cheater handpiece and the non-cheater handpiece that I will link to below. But so once you've made your decision about the base and the handpiece, probably you should figure out what kind of dops you need. I would definitely recommend ordering some extra index gears. You want a 96 index gear. It comes with a 64 index gear. You might want other ones. You can get 120, you can get 80, you can get other odd sided ones for doing like a five sided stone. So there's other ones that you might want. And if you're just gonna make one big order, I would say order all your index gears now because they're not that expensive and you'll save shipping in the long run. Um, if you're going to be serious, you might possibly consider getting a second handpiece. But that aside, once you get all that, there's a few other things you're going to need. You're going to need laps. Of course, you need cutting laps. You need polishing laps. Sterling does have a package that they offer, but I've never really used them. I've always gone with the gear loose polishing laps because pretty much everyone agrees that those laps are really great. So those are going to be down in my PDF and all the ones that I use on this machine. Like I showed you, the dual band dominatrix is great and it really serves a lot of functions. Also the dark side lap, really good for it when you need to do oxides. 
Um, other than that, there's a bunch of little odds and ends that you're going to need. You know, the loop, the tweezers, the torch, um, all of your dopping stuff. So I've actually got a kit down in that PDF that I linked to, and you can actually order that with all of basically all the accessories that aren't the machine or the polishing laps. Everything else is in this kit. So if you don't have any of the stuff, check out the kit. Um, it's really useful, and it, I've put it together all from you know, the same kind of gear that I use here in my own studio, same quality of stuff. So I'm not cutting any corners. It's actually really the best stuff that I like to use. And I just decided since I'm in Bangkok and I have access to all these lapidary supply shops, it'd be pretty easy for me to give you guys a kit so you don't have to order from a million different places online and try to figure out which stuff works the best. This stuff's already been tested because I've already been using it for a number of years. So there you have it. These are kind of my tips for transitioning or approaching the handpiece machine for the first time. If you have not used the handpiece machine, I definitely recommend playing with it if you ever get the chance. It's a, it's a totally different kind of experience than using a mass machine and it's quite fun. You know, I find it to be more fun and more comfortable than my mass machine, which is pretty much why I've transitioned permanently over to this type of setup. So those are my tips. Let me know if you have other tips that I missed, or maybe you've got a tip that you figured out that I haven't even figured out yet. I'd love to hear it. Um, send me a message or put it down in the comments and I'll be happy to um, talk about that. And if you guys have ideas or questions or topic you know, points for other videos. I would definitely love to hear about those too. Please feel free to throw those into the comments. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos, whether it be for beginners or people that are looking to transition from maybe um, hobby cutting into professional cutting, or maybe you're a professional and you're just looking to share your, your ideas. I'm looking to hear about all that stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for the constant support and the likes and the shares and the thumbs up and everything else. And especially thanks to my Patreon subscribers who I always forget to mention in these YouTube videos. Um, thank you guys so much. And if you're not a Patreon subscriber and you love all these free videos that I've been putting out for the last couple years, um, feel free to check that out. That's just a kind of a way to give back a little bit to me to help support me so that I can keep making all these videos and not have to go to work. So thank you guys so much. This is Justin K. Prim out here in Bangkok and I will check you guys out next time. See ya.